Good morning, folks. We saw a stealth CME and a hider flare yesterday. Solar wind should intensify soon here at Earth, and there's news and weather to hit as well. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. There are a number of smaller surge and field expansion events that took place yesterday. None of them was a geo-effective space weather concern. The hydro flare bump midday here on the X-ray flux was able to take us out of A-class range, but that is about it. The full story of it includes chain reaction events as these coronal fields expand and release. We know it was not a filament ejection or solar flare driven. It was aimed away from Earth, and at the exact same time we saw surges strike directly through, or perhaps outward from, the departing northern sunspot group. Its lack of magnetic complexity is likely the explanation for the low level of the event, really cleared parts of the corona that go black here in 211 angstroms. Meanwhile, solar wind at Earth is very calm, leaving no magnetic instability in our shield, and the departed coronal holes are indicating that today is the most likely day for their impact and intensification from their streams. It'll be easy to see on the charts. Meanwhile, small openings appear to pepper the center disk, while at the end of the sequence you'll see another coronal hole incoming on the south. Gong indicates that this is indeed the southern coronal hole system, negative sweeping past Earth-facing position as we enter the weekend. They're taking some concerning seismicity in the southwest Pacific as a deep blot event was followed to the southeast by a six-pointer, and then another deep shake was followed on the same southeast trajectory at magnitude 6, but this one almost 400 kilometers down. Eyes on this area. Today's top stories include a look at current sheets and magnetic fields in terms of coronal heating. Knowing full well the divergence between theories suggesting coronal temperatures are real versus ionic, like the thousands of degrees of electron temperature in Earth's upper atmosphere, but if you went there you'd freeze to death. However, what we've got here is a peek at the former, using the electromagnetic tools preferred by the latter. This really just qualifies as super cool and it is light driven, so we had to share it. Liquid crystal reactive to violet light in undulating wave patterns. This demonstrates a method for doing work or creating thrust using only light reactive material. Let's quickly come down to the weather because the corona hole should impact in daylight in the US, forcing increased electron precipitation, ionizing the air, clouds, and hail nuclei. Convergence line storms are concerning looking towards tonight. If it's early enough for the impact, the Euro systems could take the brunt of it as they'll be firing up before the US storms do at sunset. Northeast portions of that area have a mostly flood concern. Down under, we do see that convergence line of a southern low leaving Australia. That's going to head for the region. We're already watching for more seismicity. Folks, there are only about two weeks left in the pre-registration award process for the next Observing the Frontier. Register before July 15th for a chance to win free room upgrades to the presenter's floor at the conference hotel. We've got the rest of the world on windy.com, null school macro scale analysis, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.